first off, I want to say that somebody pointed out that in my last video about the 5.3 gigahertz band, I was kind of advocating for people to use it. I didn't intend it to be like that at all. I do not advocate for you to use it, and if you are using it, please use it legally. Please understand the guidelines of using it, which I myself don't even understand. I just know some minor things that I've learned from discussing it with Connex, and that's, that's what I presented in the last video. Please try to fly these things responsibly and try not to make anybody hate us more than they already do. We would all appreciate it immensely. All right, so this video is going to be about the prop rotation. And what I mean by that is actually yaw rotation of the craft. So traditionally, the props spin inward. They spin in on the front and they spin in on the back. And that has kind of always been the way that Betaflight has spun the props. I don't know if, I don't think any of them spin it differently. But there's another way you can do it. You can have them spin out, spin outwards. They don't have to spin inwards and it would have the same effect. The biggest advantage of doing that is that when they spin inward, all the crap that you pick up on your blades splatters directly onto your camera lens so you cannot see where you're going. And when you spin it outwards, it does not. It splatters on the side of the craft and you can see where you're going, which is fantastic. Now, I thought that was going to be where I was going to stop the video, but <laughs> it's a little bit more complicated than that when I started researching it. And I actually found some, some crazy ideas and benefits, which I did think about before, but I didn't really go in depth with them, with them because I didn't think really they made any real difference. All right, so let's think about the prop disc. We're generally moving in a forward direction. And if the prop disc is spinning inward like this, this counterclockwise rotation, then the outside of the, of the blade, which is spinning forward as you're moving forward, is actually going faster than the inside of the blade. You can call the inside blade uh, the retreating blade. And that's gonna mean that the outside of this prop disc is gonna make a little bit more thrust than the inside, not a lot, it's probably just about insignificant considering the prop is spinning so much faster than our direction of movement. But it's an effect, it's something to think about. And so when you look at that, you think, okay, so the outside of the prop disc is sucking more air and generating more turbulence and generating more everything before the air actually gets to the rear disc. So now we know that we use these long, long X frames because the rear discs are moved higher up out of the airflow of the front props and they can become more effective by getting more fresh air. The flow of air over the craft actually does affect the rear props. The front props are pretty much always getting clean air because they are moving forward and there's nothing in front of them to disturb the air. So in the traditional sense where the props are, this one is spinning counterclockwise and this one's spinning counterclockwise and then clockwise here and clockwise here, the effective part, the most effective part of the disc for the front is going to be the outside. The most effective part of the rear is going to be the inside. Well, that's problematic when we think about our new theories in the sense that the most effective part of the disc on the rear is getting all this disturbed airflow over the front of the quad and over the middle of the quad before it even gets to the back for the rear props to begin using it. Additionally, the front props are causing so much more, not so much, causing more turbulence on the outside which is making it more difficult for the rear props to be effective on the outside of the disc. Okay, I'll buy it. Sp switch the rotation. Now the outside of the rear props are more effective and the inside of the front props are more effective. You can have more thrust coming down out of the middle of the front, which is always clean air, and then you have more effective thrust area on the outside of the disc, which again is getting more clean air with less disturbed air because the front props are spinning slower on the outside. Okay, that makes sense. But it goes even farther than that. So let's think about a yaw rotation. We're flying forward real fast and we're gonna make a, a right turn. So when we make a right turn, these two props traditionally have to spin up and these two props have to slow down. And when we're going around the turn, we're usually slanted. This is the direction of the turn. The, the, the craft is gonna go like this. That's the direction of the turn. We're slanted and that, and if we're doing a hard rotational maneuver, that requires this prop and this prop to spin down. And this prop actually has to spin down a lot more because it has to dip this side of the craft as well. So that can potentially throw this prop into a stall situation, which means the flight controller is gonna have to spin the motor up real, quite, real fast to compensate because it doesn't have enough thrust to manage. And that can cause a little wobble in your tune or wobble when you're turning. That. I can, I can actually appreciate that that actually might happen, although tunes have gotten better and now we have 8K, 8K and 32K and they can manage all that, but it, it can, it can make it more difficult to fly in that sense. Additionally, if you're running a frame with a bottom mount battery, then this rear back prop, which has to spin up in order for you to turn right and also has to lift the back of the frame, 
lifting most of the weight of the frame because it's the high prop, a lot of the times I will come around a turn and I won't even be at max throttle, but I will hear this motor just peaked. It's just like it's pinned at max throttle as I'm coming around. And that way I know that I'm hitting the max potential of that rear back motor. And I've heard it so many times and I really don't know what to do about it. And I keep sliding the battery further and further forward. So ro switching the rotation of the props actually did help with that. So now let's look at it with the, new, with the new way, which is going to be the rear prop spinning outwards this way. So now to turn right, this prop and this prop have to spin up in order for you to turn right. What that means is that this rear lower prop will never really hit the stall potential of itself, which will mean that it doesn't fall out of, out of use and the flight controller won't have to manage it. And this prop will also not hit its max potential when you're coming around a turn and trying to floor it out of the turn or just trying to make it around the turn without, you know, dipping the back of the frame. So that's actually actually worked. I was shocked that that, that worked. And I'm, I, I don't, at this point, I don't even know why Betaflight still has the current orientation that it does. It should be flipped already. Um, so basically, you should give this a try. In actual flight, in actual use, I couldn't really tell a major effect. I did feel like it was a little easier to turn, and of course, the only thing that I definitely did feel is that when I come around a turn hard, I did not hear this this prop being pinned at max throttle, just trying to manage the craft, and I could actually punch out of the turn a little bit easier and a little bit harder. I feel like the craft does rotate a little bit easier, but I might be dreaming in that sense. The only real flight difference that I felt from all this was that rear upper prop not being pinned as easily as it was before. Give it a try. See what you think yourself. Oh yeah, to execute this, you have to flip the rotation of your ESCs in BL Heli, and then you have to apply the command, which is going to be pasted in the, in the description below. You have to do both of those things, and sometimes the command doesn't fully stick, so make sure you take your props off and check it thoroughly to make sure that it's actually spinning the right way. Check the yaw, make sure your yaw doesn't go crazy. If it doesn't stick and you haven't done it correctly, you'll just arm and it'll be sitting there and it'll start yawing all over the place. If that happens, just go back in the CLI, try to apply the command again, and just keep doing it and hit save again and again, and eventually it'll, it'll stick. That's what I had to do with mine at least. Maybe it'll work the first time on yours. Don't forget to floss.